Well, good afternoon, everybody. We'll kind of get started so we can stay on track. A lot of coaches here this first Hard Rocker luncheon. So for those that I haven't met, I'm Nate Brown, president of the Hard Rock Club. Thanks again for coming out and braving the weather. Beautiful day this September 11th in Rapid City. As I said, first Hard Rocker luncheon, and here's going to kind of be the layout. Is, you know, we're going to have a lot of these up here at the Great Christensen Hall of Fame. We're also going to get some of these out in the community a little bit, but the best thing is we'll continue to communicate with you, send you emails, give you calls, and make sure that uh, you know where we're going to be. But uh, moving forward, we're going to host these on Wednesdays. So we're going to host these on Wednesdays, and, and we'll keep you informed on where we're going to go and, and where we're going to be so you can be there and support our coaches and our students athletes. So uh, before we get into some coaches, I want to introduce the guy that's the newest here. I used to be the guy that was the newest. This guy's been here three months now. Welcome to the athletic director, Joel Lucan. Well, I'm one of those guys that uh, needs notes, so I don't forget things because I forget things uh, quite easily. Um, uh, there's no question in my mind um, that uh, I made the right decision to come to Rapid City and be part of the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology family. Um, except for today when I woke up and looked outside and there were four inches of snow on the ground in my house. Uh, and my wife uh, was un, not too happy about that either. But my daughter, on the other hand, wanted to go out and make snowmen and, and do all that good stuff. So looking forward to that tonight when I get home, maybe. Um, like Nate said, I've been here uh, about three months, three and a half months now, and uh, it's been fabulous. Uh, and that is all due to the people I work with and uh, the student athletes uh, that I get to interact with and we get to interact with. Um, I want to thank everyone who's attended our athletic events over this last weekend, Soccer Friday and Sunday. Uh, we got two more coming up this coming weekend. Um, football on Saturday night, I thought the atmosphere was electric. Um, we all know that the, the score didn't turn out quite the way we wanted it, but it's my understanding that we're making real good progress compared to what we've been in the past couple of years against Colorado School of Mines. And, you know, Stacy will probably potentially talk about this, but that's a really good measuring stick. Um, even in Kansas City, where I was from, uh, our football staff, uh, you know, knew that Colorado School of the Mines is, is doing an outstanding job. So if we can get to that to that point, I think we're, we're heading in the right direction now, but we'll, we'll be even heading in the right direction even more. Um, volleyball on Tuesday night, what a good crowd. We had a really good crowd of uh, students show up and cheer on the Lady Hard Rockers to a victory over Dickinson State. That was, uh, that was really nice to see. Gals played hard. Um, and then I want to I want a special thank you to our cheerleaders, who, which is a group that uh, you know usually gets overlooked. Um, those young men and ladies uh, showed up Saturday and kept our um, student section involved up to the to the to the clock hit zero. Uh, they did a very good job. Um, they've got a, an exceptional coach with Division One experience. Coach Schroeder, she, she cheered at uh, the University of Wyoming. And then they showed up on Tuesday to the Chamber Mixer. Some of you might have been there to Tuesday at the Chamber Mixer. It was uh, pretty pretty miserable, to be to be honest with you. So we decided to move it. We, we were going with the tailgate theme. We decided to move it from the ramps down to underneath the stadium. And uh, we were dodging little drips and drops from underneath the stadium. And uh, they were there, and they braved the, the elements. And as we all know, you know, the, the outfits of the cheerleaders were, they weren't real warm. Uh, but they stuck it out and handed out T-shirts and, uh, and mingled with, uh, with the Chamber of Commerce group and, and so did our SAC athletes. So I wanted to thank them. Um, I am exceptionally excited for, I believe it's the 129th plane of Black Hill State. And South Dakota School of Mines, unfortunately, it's up at Spearfish this year. Um, but Nate and I are hosting a tailgate, which will start at 1130 and go to 1250. Um, we're going to have beverages there. And then if you, uh, you want to bring your own food, we'll, we'll supply the beverages. Um, and uh, looking forward to it. 
you know, just looking forward to the atmosphere, see what, how it compares down here to, to, to up there. Um, it's my understanding that it's a, it's a great rivalry, and uh, I definitely want to continue it, and I want to enhance it in any way, shape, uh, and form that we can. Um, so now I'd like to introduce Tiffany Campbell, our head volleyball coach, and remind everyone that it's a great day to be a hard rocker. Thank you very much. Thank you. As all of you know, I'm really excited to not be in charge this year, so Joel, thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, I would like to introduce, I have a new assistant this year, uh, Doug Tabbert is uh, my assistant, so Doug, if you would stand up, if we could give him a round of applause, please. Uh, Doug is a familiar face to Hard Rock Athletics. Um, I was fortunate to be able to hire Doug. Uh, Jenny Malone was my assistant the last four years, and you know I was very sad to see Jenny leave, but Doug has brought a wealth of experience and just a new way of looking at this team and, and just bring a lot of um, intangible things to this program this year. So I'm really fortunate and very happy that Doug has chosen to be a part of the Hard Rock Volleyball program this year which was a grind on this team. And so we've really expressed to them that we've got to come out and be really aggressive, confident, try to put together some runs of points so we're not getting to the point that we play five game sets. Um, we've got a little bit smaller of a roster this year. We've got 12 on our roster. Um, so far, knock on wood, it's been a very good, I think we've got a very high caliber of quality of athlete on our team. I've really enjoyed this team this year, I think with a smaller group. It's just a different team chemistry. Um, and I, it's a pretty laid back group, which I like. Um, so it's just kind of a different feel, especially internally as coaching staff. So I think we've got some, some things to really move upon. Uh, we did come out, like I said, one and three over the weekend, which was a little disappointing. We couldn't finish out the match over Newman Saturday night in five sets. But I felt like we got better as the weekend went on. Um, the, ha the teams that we played definitely highlighted things that we need to improve upon. But it was nice to get back Tuesday night. As Joel said, we beat Dickinson State in three sets. And I felt like that's where we really struggled last year was to beat teams in three sets that we should beat. And we beat teams, especially Tuesday night that those of you were here to, to see, we uh, beat them convincingly. I think Brad's got some clips um, from Tuesday night. Obviously, Sam Johnson's number 16, hands down, one of our top two players in the middle here. She brings a lot of offense to our team. Um, Number 13 is Kirsten Johnson. She and Sam are both sisters. So we're very fortunate to have not only two sisters on our team, but two players of this caliber. Sam is very offensive oriented, so we've done a lot of things to get Sam a lot of offensive swings. Um, and just having this team as a little bit smaller, like I said, with a little bit higher quality of athlete this year has been really important. The libero middle back that you'll see here, Kylie Gorn Prada, number four, she actually was a really late signee this summer, we're fortunate to have her add some ball control. Because that was one thing Coach and I were really uh, concerned about coming into this year as far as what our serve receive was going to do. We've got a lot of offensive firepower, as you guys have seen just from these clips. But if we can't pass the ball, we're not going to be very good this fall. So Kylie actually is Miss Flag Football in the state of Florida. So she's a pretty good athlete, great kid. Yeah. So it's kind of nice to have another versatile athlete within this program this way. Uh, but Tuesday night was nice to get our record back to we want to try to stay near 500, especially going into this weekend. Um, we go to the Northern Sun Challenge, which Northern Sun is going to be one of the top two volleyball conferences in the country. So we're going to see some very aggressive and high-level athletic teams this weekend. Um, I know the kids are excited, Coach and I are excited, but it's really going to be a grind for us. We're going to have to really buckle down and be confident with what we're doing this weekend. Uh, we play Augustana, University of Sioux Falls, Minnesota Moorhead and Bemidji State. So it's going to be a weekend of very good teams, but um, we're a young team, so we've got to learn how to play these teams and be able to execute a little bit better that way. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I'm under a time crunch, said Nate. So. Any questions? Where are the two sisters from? They are from Bell Plain, Minnesota. And they're actually club teammates, obviously, as well. So yeah. No sibling rivalry because they don't play the same position, so that works out quite well. <laughs> but no, fortunate to have two uh, good players of that caliber within our program. Good. Thank you. One thing Tiffany forgot to mention, 
she picked up her career victory number 100 last week. So congratulations. <laughs> Very Next up, the guy that I think has done a great job. I know he's not out for moral victories, uh, as he told me last night, uh, but he's really turned the football program around. Good weekend this weekend for head coach Stacy Collins. Thank, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, uh, everybody, for coming out. It's a great crowd out here today. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Colorado Mines game. You know, certainly it's a solid football team. Uh, we knew that going into it. And really left some things uh, out, out on the field. Uh, in, in those situations, I thought there was a couple of critical fourth downs early in the game. Uh, certainly one on defense that they turned into a wheel route that went for a touchdown. That if you get that stop, you got a great field position, a chance to gain some momentum. And then a fourth down situation we had early that we didn't execute on. And, and those were the things it, with, with against a solid opponent you got to stay with. You got you to keep in the fight. Uh, I thought we did some good job, a good job moving the football on offense. We, we can't have turnovers. We had. Three turnovers in the first half. That's uncharacteristic of what we've done. We've got to get that cleaned up. Defensively, we do a lot of good things. You know, we create four turnovers. We run around. And then at the most critical times, third and fourth down, we can't get off the field. And so those are the things we've got to get fixed. Uh, the biggest improvements usually happen between week one and week two in college football. I'm excited about the, uh, the culture of this team. I'm excited about the leadership. And certainly excited to play this 129th game for the home state trophy. But take a quick peek at some cuts you got here, Brad, on uh, Saturday's game. Excuse me. Uh, this is Trevor McKinney, our quarterback. Certainly a very accurate as a passer, um, very dangerous as a runner, and we're going to continue to use him in those roles. Uh, he can buy some time with his feet, make people miss, and I thought he did that very well on Saturday. Does a great job of getting the ball across the plane in the end zone here and, and scoring a touchdown. Really got to give a lot of credit to our offensive line. Uh, Colorado Mines does a lot of stuff, a lot of movement defensively. With their D-line, there's a lot of pressure, and we have five seniors that, that are playing for us up front, and a lot of times that goes without being said, but I thought they did a great job of competing. One of the biggest differences between how we played against them in the previous years and this year was how our O-line handled the pressure. Uh, here's the situation right here. we got uh, Marcus Sanchez. He's a transfer receiver for us, mechanical engineer from Golden West College, which is down in the Huntington Beach area, and Marcus is only going to get better. He had a couple of phenomenal catches. We always have a couple of red zone periods in practice this week. And I'm excited about where Marcus is at, but even more excited about where he's going to be as we progress throughout the season. And this last one, and with Ben Broker, with, with the quarterback change that we've had, and, and we had a, a lot of talent in the quarterback. When you go out and watch our, our quarterbacks practice, we've got a lot of talent. So we're still packaging Ben as a quarterback and, and have a, a set of plays for him. But he's 6'5", he's extremely athletic, and He's won in the last 11 games. He scored a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, and thrown for a touchdown. Uh, that's pretty impressive on that. And, and he certainly embraced the role that he has right now, and we're excited about where, where Ben is at. Any questions that I can answer about the, uh, the Colorado School of Mines game? Tim Crenshaw? Yeah, Tim, Tim has a concussion. You know, uh, right now we're going through the protocol on that piece. I would call him probable going into the game. You know, with a concussion, it's. Uh, we got to make sure everything's he's clear. Uh, he did did run around in practice yesterday. Certainly no contact, and um, as the doctors and, and the athletic trainers give us clearance on Saturday, but it's a problem as of today. Is he going to continue to test the uh, after point after situation? Yeah, we will. You know, well, there's a couple <laughs> reasons for it, and when you don't get it, obviously it doesn't go well. But when you do, you know, we've been I think we we're we're 14 for. 22 or 23 since we've been here for it. So when you look at the average, and everybody probably in this room is a math guy, so it, it works pretty well. So from, from the math standpoint, it works. But really, one of the reasons I do it, being a defensive guy in my background, not coaching defense now, but you got to spend time on it all week. And you can't, I can't tell you how many times when the coaches' staffs come in from other teams, coach, you're killing me, man. We're wasting all this time, and that's what I want them to do. Line up to it, spend time on it, that's pulling time away from somewhere else. So not as much, you know, you certainly want to stay ahead of the 50% average so you're getting your points on the board. But more importantly, I want them to use the time to line up to it you know, and, and, and so we can gain some momentum when we do it. Yeah. What's your percentage against good teams on that? Well, define a good team, Judd. As a, uh, uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know what is against teams against you know, 500. Right? You know, Carney last year, we went out, got him on the first <laughs> one yeah, on that piece in my AA team. Uh, we got against Fort Hayes on the piece, so I really have, I don't chart it on, on that end. Yeah, it's kind of, we stole it from Boise about seven years ago, so we used it when I was in Central Washington, used it at Portland State. 
brought it here. Um, to me, it's, it's, it's either going to go into a full, full fledged or, or get away from it. And, and it's, it's really, I think, helped in, in some of the pressure we, we don't see against our PAT field goal more than anything. Coach, what are your thoughts on BH? What do you know about it? Yeah, well, BH, they played Montana State last week, and Montana State's a good football team. You know, so I, I don't think that score or that game is really an indicator of who or what they are. They got a senior quarterback and, and a kid who's played a lot of football games. And anytime you have a trigger man that is a dual threat, both, both passing the ball, throwing the ball, uh, they'll be solid on, on that on that phase. Uh, you know, Luke Whalen is a tight end for them. I believe was a 13 RMAC All Conference player last year. They've got a lot of returners. They'll be physical up front on the offensive side. Defensively, they're big, they're physical, and we all know what the game is. You know, we we've got to match our intensity, and certainly our players are up for that. Um, but they're a good football team, and it's early in the season. Uh, it's a springboard game for a win, and and it'll be a dogfight out there on Saturday. Right. Well, questions. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Good luck to you. The next guy up is a guy who had a couple of heartbreakers here in the opening weekend. But uh, Joe Berger's done a nice job with the soccer program, new program here at Mines. Head Coach Joe Berger. Got you. I think for the first time in three years, I stand here a little disappointed because I thought we were actually the better team on Friday night. Um, and I think that when we finally look at the stat sheet and see how even the game was, I think we're in the right spot. Uh, right spot. Um, you know, it, the, the hard grind for us is that me and, and my new assistant, Jordan Cadillac, who's a goalkeeper specialist, which adds, um, and then also the recruiting that Luke Schweitzer did for the year before has really set us apart and put prepared us for this season. I think, uh, you know, we still started five freshmen on Friday night. But I think it's also kind of uh, a, uh, a compliment to our older players that have put in the sweat equity for three years to kind of see the fruits of their labors a little bit and kind of keep going. The Michael McGraws, the Andreas Scows, the Thomas Stasiaks, those guys that keep grinding it out and, and are kind of the pillars for our program. Um, yeah, the, the game Friday night, I thought uh, we could have been up 2-0. We scored a great first goal, which we'll see here in a few minutes, or right now. Uh, so we, we kind of play. Um, the, we win the ball. Uh, actually, that's a goalkeeper save, so that's good. That's our freshman goalkeeper, Braden Federley, uh, who played with a lot of confidence. First time out, first college game. And then this is the goal, I believe. It's a great, Michael McGraw, who's a junior, plays the ball wide. And Thomas Stasiak, a great left-footed player, picks out uh, picks out a freshman, uh, Sean Tavern, on a beautiful goal from the service and, and the header into the goal. You couldn't draw it up any more textbook than that. Um, but that shows you just like anything, having a left-hander or a left-footed is a commodity. We're lucky to have three. And this is our, uh, our guys fighting defensively with the tenacity that they showed over the last two years and actually uh, thwarting a, a corner kick opportunity kind of going. But I think, uh, as you can see, this is where we're able to, to play some good soccer, connect, and, and keep the ball a little bit better than we were able to last year. I think last year was a great learning experience for us, for our first year in the GNAC. Um, because this was actually the first year all of us has had played real actual D2 schedule and the competition. But, you know, it's just a compliment to our guys, how hard the returners fought in the weight room and this stuff coming back. But then also the quality of the student athletes that we're able to get because of the institution. Um, so I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how we are, uh, how we are growing. Um, we have very two winnable games again. Um, this weekend we play Southwest Baptist at Friday night at 7.30 in Sioux Park. And then we play Fort Hayes State, which is in the top 25, uh, Sunday at 1 o'clock. So hopefully uh, the uh, weather messes with those visiting teams as well, as much as it messes with us. So, so it's good. I think, uh, I think another compliment to the community is the, the new surface at, uh, at Sioux Park. Uh, what a quality, 
quality surface, a great place to play our home games, looking into Dino Hill and everything. So I thought that was uh, fantastic to have that quality of a surface and to have our guys being able to showcase their ability on that. That makes it easier as a player. And, and uh, we're very happy to, uh, to showcase that to our visiting team and just raving compliments on our facility. So I think that is uh, just uh, an overall compliment to our entire community and their commitment to sports in the area. Any questions for me? Yes, Brad. Uh, there was, I believe, three uh, overtime games uh, this last weekend. Can you just kind of explain how um, these uh, tournaments work compared to what we do in the conference? Uh, they actually work exactly the same as we work in the conference. In oh. college soccer, the game goes to overtime. You can play up to two 10-minute overtimes, <laughs> which is golden goal or sudden victory or sudden death, however you call it. So if somebody scores, the game's over. Um, so that's what happened to us on Friday. And then we had uh, two teams that actually ended in a tie because after the 20 minutes, it's over and they're done with it. So we don't move on to penalty kicks or the tiebreakers after that. That will come tournament time for the tournaments and stuff. So in soccer, if after an extra 20 minutes, it's, it's a tie. So. But it was good. It was exciting soccer. Um, I think you can say see that our guys try to play with purpose and then you know, I would say that we should have won on Sunday. I thought uh, Upper Iowa was a quality opponent, but we definitely could have won. We could have won. It was that even of a game. So we just have to learn how to win a little bit. So uh, we had a great week of practice, and hopefully, uh, hopefully Friday night we're in the right column versus Southwest Bend. So. Talking about the surfaces, you know, grass to turf. Mm -hmm. How does that change? Does it make the game faster? For <laughs> well, if you're playing on surface, on a, an artificial surface, we play all but two of our conference games on artificial surface, and we're lucky enough to train on it at O'Hare Stadium. So it's it's good. It, it, our team has to be a little bit better with the ball because the game is a little bit faster. You have to be a little bit more technical or better with the ball um, than maybe you would be with grass. But you know, with with as good as the artificial surfaces are these days, it's all, I think from playing from grass to artificial turf, it's only a big deal if the coach makes it a big deal. The coaches have played, or the players have played on it so much growing up that if I say, oh my gosh, we're playing a, uh, a game on grass that our kids will feed on this, but to me, there's not a big difference between playing soccer on the artificial surface and the grass surface these days anymore. It's, so they don't make it a big deal. No, I, <laughs> I just want to roll the ball out and play. I want the kids to play and kind of go and showcase or something. But we're lucky enough to practice at O'Hare Stadium, so it makes it easy for us. Coach, uh, that's a beautiful field, but there's a it's an awful busy field. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all kinds of marks and a lot mm -hmm. of that stuff. Is that distracting at all to players? To, uh, uh, not when you're playing the game. I think the kids are pretty used to it because they play on a lot of fields that are like that already. Um, as a as a purist, I would love to have a soccer only field, but but uh, but you know, I think that's. That's it. It actually helps us when we break down tapes having all the lines because we can measure how far our spacing is and this. So it actually is a, is a beneficial tool in some ways after the game. But the kids know the soccer lines are in yellow, so you can, you can really easily sell the difference. And, and the kids are used to it. They play on those surfaces so much that it's second nature to them. The kids these days don't have it like I had it. When the, the grass was always too tight, and there was dirt in the gold mouse. So. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> yes? What about the size of the field? What's the issue there? Uh, there is no issue. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think the most important thing, that it's a great surface, and that we are uh, making sure that uh, we're maximizing. We just have to make sure that all our opponents know the dimensions of our field, and, and nobody has... Uh, everybody that's been here before in the conference is excited that it's a new surface, so size really isn't an issue for us. Any questions? Thank you guys. Thanks for having me. The guy that's been here for a while but taking over a new position, uh, head cross country coach is Steve Johnson. Welcome, Coach Johnson. Thanks, Nate. 
Um, last week we had our first meet of the season. We were out at Founders Park on Friday morning <coughs> and uh, faced off against two of our fellow RMAC opponents, Black Hill State and Shattered State. Um, pretty good competition overall. The, uh, the Shattered State women are ranked, uh, were, were sixth in the conference last year. And they came out and they ran exactly what we expected out of number six in the conference. Um, they, they pretty much dominated the meet, to be honest. But we had gone out with a fairly conservative race plan, and our girls executed it to a T. I couldn't have asked them to do any better. And we were led by four freshmen. And then, uh, and basically, we came out. Last year, for comparison, our top time was 21.13 on the same course, same time of year. This year, our top time was 19.49, and we put six girls under 21. Uh, so, and that put us, that actually still left us about six points behind Black Hill State, but to be honest, I would attribute that more to the fact that we went out conservatively than than anything else. These girls, these freshman girls and the sophomore girls stepping up right behind them have been absolutely phenomenal. The one person that we are really missing right now is our uh, is our upperclassman, Brittany Wood, who's out on co-op this year. And uh, so we're looking forward to getting her back for next year, though. Uh, on the men's side, it was basically a dead heat. Um, we took on Shatterns men and BH's men are both ranked in the top 10 in the RMAC and uh, we came out and we were three points behind them. They tied for first and, and BH won on the tie break and then we were we were right there. I mean, we literally needed to move two places up anywhere along the line and, and it would have been a totally different story. And same story as the women. Last year we came out 28-15 was our top guy. And this year we came out and put our top guy at 26.53. We had five under that 28.15 mark. And, uh, and just phenomenal race for that early in the season when we haven't done any speed work to speak of. Uh, this week we're going down to the Shatter. We're going to get a little rematch head to head with them. Uh, I was just playing around with the points a little bit before this all kicked off today. And, and just taking Black Hill State out of the mix, it's probably a one point match. So we're going to try try our best on the men's side to uh, return the favor and beat them on their home course. And on the women's side, we're going to try to match up a little bit more. We're going to go out a little more aggressively this time, turn those freshmen loose a little bit, see what they can do. See if we can mix up with, especially with Shatter's 3, 4, 5 runners. Any questions for me? <clears throat> Any injuries right now? You know, we've got a few little nicks and dings here and there, but uh, we're, we're looking pretty good. Overall, uh, you know, this time of year's the time when we start usually seeing a few people step back, but uh, actually, for the most part, we have uh, we have one of our girls um, who's dealing with some IT band stuff, but uh, she's actually she's actually healing up quite nicely, and and I would expect to see her. Um, she ran number two for us this last week. She's going to be easily battling for that number one spot. You mentioned some pretty great improvements last year to this year. Is that you have new runners, you have improvements, a little bit of both? What, what overall is uh, going in the direction? A little bit of both. Um, you know, we got uh, Travis Boos back off of co op on the men's side. I think Cole Yolovich back on the men's side off of redshirt year. Um, we also brought in some pretty good freshmen. Um, we'll actually get to see one more of our freshman guys this week. Um, and on the women's side, it was those four freshmen have really changed our dynamic in practice. We are we are training at a at a fairly high level compared to where we were at this time of year, and dealing with a lot less injuries out of those younger runners than what we saw at this point last year. So that's made a huge difference. Any other questions? All right, thank you. couple of notes before we conclude here. Remember, Hard Rocker Luncheons, we're going to do them on Wednesdays, so mark that down, and, and we'll communicate with you on where we're going to be. Next Wednesday, we're going to be back here.
but due to the parking issue, due to wanting to get out in the community a little bit, we're going to be moving around to some different restaurants and things of that nature. So we'll we'll make sure you're on task for that. Also, a big thank you to Brad Bloom. He puts this together, put the highlights together. Thanks very much, Sports Information Director. We're also going to have student athletes join us. We have a lot of a lot of coaches today. We're going to bring student athletes into the fold as well. You get to meet some of those some of those kids as we move forward as well. So if you haven't received a pocket schedule, I think we still have a few more out front on your way out the door. Grab a pocket schedule. We hope to see you up at Black Hill State again. We're going to have an athletic director's tailgate east side of the parking east side of the stadium up at Black Hill State about 11:30 to 12:50. So drop on by. Look forward to cheering on Coach Collins and the Hard Rockers and. Thanks again for coming. We'll see you up there this weekend and see you here next Wednesday. Thanks a lot.